Pastor Clark, and uh, thank you, Pastor Quick, and uh, everyone who has spoken uh, before me. My name is Josiah Magnuson. I'm a state representative for District 38 in uh, all along the top of Spartanburg County, Landrum, Campobello, Chesney. Uh, if you live north of Main Street and in Inman, you're in my district. So all along the state line, I call it the cherry on top of South Carolina. Uh, I was elected in 2016 and defeated a uh, liberal establishment incumbent, and um, really the straw that broke the camel's back, I knew he wasn't real accountable to the people, but uh, he, I brought him a pledge for personhood, and uh, he said he would sign it, but that he didn't agree with it. And uh, I thought, well, how like a politician is that? So, uh, <laughs> so um, anyway, I was blessed to have a lot, of, uh, a lot of support from even people here, and I love to see a lot of my friends here today, and thank you all for coming out and spending time for this very most important issue of our, of our age today. Um, and um, so I'd like to share with you several thoughts this morning. And uh, first of all, I want to thank you for being here. I mean, this is a, a wonderful, and like I say, it's the most important issue, I think, of our time. I think that really the life of people, of individual people, and more than that, of innocent people, is crucial. And we are going to need to defend that. That is the purpose, that is the role of civil government in God's society is to defend the innocent is to punish people who take innocent life. That's why civil government was established. And if we're failing at that, then we're failing at pretty much everything. So we have to defend the God-given rights of the innocent. Now, we talk a lot here about liberty and we talk about freedom. Um, a lot of people don't define what liberty really is. And I believe that liberty is the ability to say no. You have to be able to say no to big government. You have to be able to say no to a lot of things. And we need, I believe, to say no in our time to abortion. Yes. Now, there was a concept that the founders of our country talked a lot about, and it's not seen so much today anymore. We don't really discuss it, but it's the idea called virtue. And this is a rich idea that comes all the way back from ancient Greece. Uh, Aristotle says virtue can be summed up in doing justly among neighbors, doing justice to your neighbors. And the idea of the Greeks was that there was a moral courage, almost a manliness, that you could stand up against evil, not just in a negative sense, to choose to say no, liberty's ability to say no, but also in a positive sense, to love your neighbors, to do right in a positive way. And I love to see that you all have that virtue. You have the ability, the positive way to stand up and, and love your neighbors and be here, do something that might have been uncomfortable to do, come all the way down to Columbia this morning and take a stand. Virtue, I believe, is something that we need to reignite in our country today. That's the only solution that I know of that is going to actually end abortion. Let me read you a few quotes from our founders because the founders, I believe, knew that words on paper couldn't defend America. The idea of life can't be defended by simply the fact that it exists in the Declaration of Independence, as much as we like to appeal to that. James Madison says, is there no virtue among us? If there be not, we are in a wretched situation. No theoretical check, no form of government can render us secure. To suppose that any form of government can secure liberty or happiness without any virtue in the people is a chimerical idea. It means it's just in your imagination. So we need virtue if we're going to defend liberty. George Washington says virtue and morality is a necessary spring of popular government. Benjamin Franklin said, only a virtuous people is capable of freedom. As nations become more and more corrupt, they have more need of masters. Thomas Jefferson says this, no government can continue good but under the control of the people and their minds are to be informed by education what is right and what is wrong to be encouraged in habits of virtue, and to be ter deterred from those of vice. These are the inculcations necessary to render the people a sure basis for the structure and order of government. Richard Henry Lee, and I'll get two more. Richard Henry Lee, the signer of the Declaration of Independence, says it is certainly true that a popular government cannot flourish without virtue in the people. And George Mason, the father of the Bill of Rights, says this, no free government or the blessings of liberty can be preserved to any people but by a firm adherence to justice, moderation, temperance, frugality, and virtue, and by frequent recurrence to fundamental principles. So my friends, I would submit to you that virtue is a foundational element, 
And the only way that we're going to win this fight is to take moral courage to say no to the evil of the day and to positively love our neighbors. Now, we need to think about how does this practically take effect? How do we do anything? How do we win this battle for personhood? Because that's the question. It's not going to do any good to stand around in a circle and just talk about, well, we need personhood. At least I don't think so. We actually have to do something. And I know many of you are taking action. But the only thing in politics that actually makes a difference is public pressure. We talk about, and I know Senator Cash has discussed this morning already, about the Senate Judiciary Committee and how there is a, uh, a certain senator or a few senators that are pretty much dead set against this act. Now, yes sir, <laughs> and the only way, the only way that you're going to accomplish and, and we are going to accomplish together the passage of this act is to have constituents, people from those areas that are concerned, to get on the phones and put that pressure, that, that force, that encouragement on those senators. And what does that take? That takes virtue. That takes a moral courage, because you've got to have the courage to get on the phone. You've got to have a courage to educate yourself on the issue. You've got to have a courage to keep coming down here even when it gets tough, even when you're a little tired, even when maybe your neighbors wonder what you're up to. <laughs> and that's another part of this, is go to your neighbors, knock on their doors, talk about, talk about this, get on the radio, love your neighbors, care about them, and of course, care about the innocent children who are also our neighbors. So, my friends, I believe that virtue here is a, a crucial part of the answer for our country. Um, I believe that it solves so many problems when we care about others, when we have this, this moral courage and character to go out and do what's right, talk to people, do some things that, that get us outside our comfort zones, but I believe that those things are what liberty is based on because liberty is the ability to say no and when we can say no and when we practice that and when we come down here and we um, and we take action together as a as a community as a body then we are able to be successful so let's put pressure on the right places let's activate let me close with this word from Cicero a Roman orator he says this he says the whole glory of virtue resides in activity and you all are taking action today. We need more people to take that action, that virtuous activity that comes from courage and character in the heart. We need more people to do that. And it's up to you to ignite them. Samuel Adams says this, it does not take a majority to prevail, but rather an irate and tireless minority keen on setting brush fires of freedom in the minds of men. My friends, we can set brush fires of freedom, we can take courage, and we can activate our neighbors in our communities to end abortion in South Carolina. Thank you.